Joining us now, the head coach of the Utica Comets, who staved off elimination with a big win over the Marlies in Calder Cup playoff action last night, Trent Cull. Trent, how are you? I'm good, boys. How are you guys doing? We're very well. Congratulations on the win, keeping the series alive. What were some of the keys to cut the deficit to 2-1 as you guys head back into Friday's Game 4 in Utica? Uh, you know what? Probably uh, our uh, getting Reed Boucher back was certainly a shot in the arm for our team, for our group, you know, mentally and physically. Uh, Thatcher Demko played really well. Um, and you know what? I, I thought we had a great start to the game. Uh, we're a little bit of a kind of a we, we play hard. Uh, you know what? I, the same probably ex- expectations you hear from from Travis Green in, in Vancouver. And so sometimes we get a little bit uh, we cross the, the line a little bit with the the emotion. But we know we can keep those in check a little bit more, and uh, that'll be something we'll try to focus on a little bit for tomorrow. How much does the crowd help your group? I mean, I, I've never seen a game or been to a game in Utica, but I'm hearing that it's a pretty raucous barn down there. It's great. You know, I, thank you for mentioning that. You know, I, I'd be you know, remiss to, to not say that. Uh, for us to come home and get some home cooking and uh, and be in our, in our barn in front of our fans, it was, uh, it's a, not a huge building, but it's almost like the best way I could say to you to picture it, it's like a – very mini, uh, small scale Madison Square Garden. It's got the cables going across the top. Uh, it's a lower barn. Uh, the fans are kind of right on top of you. And we had uh, Darren Archibald drop the puck, which was pretty loud there. And then there's certain moments where we scored. And then at the end of the first period, it was three nothing as we're carrying out the first period. And uh, boy, they were they were pumped up and certainly behind the boys. And that's uh, certainly nice to have that that feeling for sure. It's kind of an odd thing, uh, the relationship between a, a team and, and the fans in the AHL, because oftentimes the best players end up going to the NHL. What, what is the key to developing that relationship between between fans and, and the American League City? Uh, well, you know what? I think uh, Rob Esch deserves a lot of the credit. He's the one who's brought this back to his hometown and, and got this team here. And I mean, you know, here it's been five years. This is the fifth year. So I've just come in. This is only obviously my first and then only year here so far. But I uh, just, uh, it's a smaller town. Uh, it's really, uh, I guess that the hockey is, is certainly well received. And uh, it's a great group that uh, loves to come out and watch, that's for sure. But um, it is tough, like you say. Like, there, and there was times we went through 58 players this year so there's times where you know we would have a starting lineup come onto the ice and, and i don't even know if, ha- if the fans would know who one of the players were so you know it's uh i i know for sure we've it's actually been funny there's been chance and even chance when we've been on the road some of our fans go on the road and they'd be uh, chanting pto and that means <laughs> professional tryout agreement and you know what i mean and that's where you're having these these guys who've come in and are you know scoring goals or this or that there's one game which clearly our, our playoffs, uh, us making playoffs, we had four PTOs score the goals and we won four or three. So it was just, uh, you know, these guys, I can't say enough about the guys that we have here, how great they've been with the guys coming in. And then the guys coming in, you know, every 58 player has been a part of us this year. It's been a, a huge part of us getting the playoffs. Is it important to have like a veteran guy like Carter Banks who 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 has been with the team, I think it's four years now, who the, there's at least some um, consistency for the fans to, to have a guy like that that's the, that's out there every game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, to have, like, there's two sides of it. I think it's, it was excellent for the, the fans just alone to see Darren Archibald drop the puck and then see him. This is a, a player who's grown in front of the, the, the fans' eyes over the last four or five years here. And now he's playing in the NHL for Vancouver. So it's awesome. They feel like that they're grown with him, you know, and that's hopefully something that we're going to establish as we move along. But then to have someone like Carter who, you know, has played for them, but uh, is here now and does such a good job, like, First and foremost, like Carter's a just a he's a he's a good human being. You know what I mean? He's a he's a he's a guy that it's like your son you want him to grow up to like, or if you're a parent and you want your your daughter to marry a guy, like this is probably the guy. You know, speaking as a parent kind of thing. So he's just a but you know what? Huge competitor and you know underrated uh, hockey sense he has. So I mean, he's he's a guy who helps guys on the ice, off the ice. Very, very lucky. I know the organization, and for me, too, he's a huge, he's like an assistant, you know, extended coaching for me in, in the dressing room. 
We're speaking to Utica Comets head coach Trent Cull. The Comets cut their deficit in their first round series to the Toronto Marlies to 2-1 with a big win. Last night, game four goes on Friday. Trent, I want to circle back to Thatcher Demko for a sec. I had a chance to speak earlier with Curtis Sanford, his goalie coach down in Utica just prior to the playoffs. And over the weekend, I talked with Trevor Linden, and they both said the same thing. They were really excited to see Demko in his first ever professional playoff. And I think that was heightened because of who the opponent was, because the Marlies were such a good team, because they were such a talented offensive group. Through the three games thus far, Demko's been good. He's got a 920 save percentage. It was 35 saves on 37 shots in last night's win. Given the level of competition and what you've seen so far, what have you thought about how Demko has handled this first big test in his professional career? Uh, it's 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 great. He's done a great job. I mean, this is this is the other part where we're saying why it's so important to have our guys come in and how great of a job our team did by, you know, allowing us kind of uh, performing so well that what they did to get us a chance in the playoffs because this is such a development tool to see your players, your prospects uh, play in these pressure situations and it's and it's fun. Like I keep reminding the guys, like this is this is awesome. Like this is why you play. You know, this is this see how you perform and and it's a great opportunity and I think Thatcher has done a a fantastic job with that he's been um, he's given us a chance to win every night he's played Uh, first game that we lost in overtime but you know it was very solid for us even the second night like we were it's a it's it's a 3-2 game going in the last five minutes of the game so uh, you know what he's given us a chance to win and again last night he was fantastic I think this is all just the the perfect situation for for your prospect and i think that's where thatcher is doing a great job handling it well mentally physically and uh the hopefully the longer we can go just the more experience it gets him and all the the vancouver uh, canuck prospects you mentioned prospect development How do you balance that? Because at the end of the day, you're trying to win a playoff series. So you're going to play the guys that are going to give you the best chance. But at the same time, you also pointed out, this is a great tool to develop prospects because these are high-stakes games at the professional level that will prep them for the NHL. So with that, how do you go about working in the likes of a guy that just joined the team like Jonathan Dolan or a kid like Cole Lynn who's only 19 years old and is there to soak up some of the experience? How do you do that, that, that fine balance between getting them in trying to get them experience, but also icing the most competitive team to try and beat the Marlies. You know what? It, it's very, it's simple. It's, you know what? It's on an earned and, uh, and, and that's how it is. I mean, we've, we've done it, uh, earned accountability all year and guys will play if they deserve it. And I think Jonathan has come in and done a great job and he deserves to play for our team right now. He's, he's, he's doing a fantastic job and whether it's, you know, Cole Castles, Michael Carconi or Zach McEwen or Ashton Sautner, et cetera, you know, like these guys are, it's, it's great for them to be a part of this. And you know what? When you have to change things or scale back things, we will. And it's always in the, in the, the best interest of the team, which is also in the best interest of the development of the player as well. So, but uh, guys like Jonathan have made it easy. And Cole is not like he's, it's not like things are not working out for him. It's great. He's around us. He's practicing with us. It's such a huge step to come over here for any junior. I mean, I can speak with experience coaching in the Tampa organization last year. We went to the finals here and, and, and hardly any of our prospects played in, in the playoffs. So at that time when, so it's amazing, but having them around being around it it's great experience for them and will only kind of give them a step up when we get to the playoffs next year again and maybe someone like colin will play more of a role what does jonathan dolan do well that you've really liked i like his, his hockey sense uh he's made uh just like some of his reads where he's going he's got a plan uh with the puck before he gets the puck which is you know what for players to be able to think ahead like that uh, it's fantastic He's smooth. He's made some real good transition plays off the wall. Simple plays, but you know what? They, they're they not simple plays in the playoffs either. And uh, he's a guy offensively. He he moves and gets in the right holes quick, and he's trying to find those spots. He's, he's, uh, he's a player that you, you want to play with too. Like he'll shoot the puck or try to give you that pass and try to make those good plays. And, and and all that, like he's he's a good forecheck. Like he's not going to go and run someone through the wall, but there's no fear in his game, and he's got a good stick, and uh, he's done a good job. Like I've I've 
he's playing right now and he deserves to play and he's playing some power play time for us as well. So I really liked his development over the year. Uh, I know he didn't play here for us, but where he was at the start of our year here in Utica, he played exhibition games and now seeing him come back to us playing now, uh, it's been a great a great year for him uh, wherever he played, and it's really I'm excited to have him here because I think he's really uh, added to our team. Now Dolan is one year older than Cole Lind, and he's spent uh, he's he's played against some older guys this season over in, the, in, in Sweden. Cole Lind still 19. What does it like? What what is the biggest thing about transitioning from junior to AHL? We hear a lot about the pace and not so much the skating pace, but just the decision making pace. Is that where Cole is right now? Oh well, first of all, like, uh, and this would go along with with Jasic as well. Jasic and Don play pro, right? So they play pro already against men in Europe. So that's a huge, huge step, obviously. Uh, you know, Cole Lynn is playing against guys his peers and or kids younger than him. So uh, that's just that's just junior hockey and how it is. But the pace is both. Like to tell you that the skating absolutely way faster. Uh, the pace of play absolutely way faster. And not only that, but. The same as the NHL, you can per- compare it to the American Hockey League as well. If you go to an NHL game in October or, or you know November, and then you come back and you see playoff hockey right now, it, it's way better hockey. You know what? It's just that funnel effect. As you keep on going, better teams are left, faster pace. Like that's how that's how the league operates here. It's obviously on the same scale as the NHL, but it's the same way here. So for a kid to, to come out of junior playing against his peers and or younger kids and to jump into pro hockey at this level right now, it is a huge adjustment, a huge adjustment. So that's why, so that kind of gives you the answer as opposed to a kid who's playing pro already, even though it's in Europe, and then those guys have just come out of playoffs there as well. So they're probably playing at the peak of where they could be to get them ready for here. Game four against the Marlies goes Friday. If it goes to a game five, that'll be on Sunday. Trent, thanks a lot for doing this today. Really appreciate it. Best of luck with the remainder of this series. Hopefully we can talk after it and talk about you guys defeating the Marlies. Absolutely. No ifs here, boys. No ifs. We'll be be, uh, back in Canada on Sunday. Sounds good. Thanks, Trent. Good luck, bud. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Trent Call, the head coach of the Utica Comets, who I just called Bud. He's your bud now. I like Trent. Yeah. He's good to talk to. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Both the guys that are down in Utica right now, I did an article on the Athletic for for the Athletic on Ryan Johnson, the GM down there. Yeah. Both guys are super well-spoken, mm-hmm. and they're easy to talk to. Like, every time we have an interview with one of them, like, it's not hard to do. And they're not spinning. No. They're, they're pretty realistic in their assessments. Yeah. Um, you know, Cole Lind is 19 years old, and he's never played pro hockey. This is his learning experience. Jonathan Dolan was playing over in Sweden. He's a year older than Lind. And, like, he, he was, it's not like they were playing, you know, he was playing in the second division there in right. Sweden. He got, he got his team promoted at the end of the season. But a lot of the guys in the league on his team are in their mid 20s. Well, They're it's older a guys. Professional. Yeah, it's a professional league. league. Yeah. And at the end of the year, they actually had to play a top flight team who was going to get relegated. So they did technically play they played southampton right <laughs> or exeter or something like that i don't know what <laughs> team that was trying to get trying to avoid relegation anyway point being there's not really a comparison to be made with what jonathan dolan is doing in utica right now and what colind is doing they're two, they, they they came from two totally separate entities lind was playing against guys his own age maybe there was a 20 year old or an overager here and there but lind was dominating his peers It's just a big difference.